Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Lord's Prayer. This is another Saturday morning at 6 a.m. We are in June. We are halfway through the year. 2021 came in and it is moving. And we do not want to get left behind, okay? So good morning to everyone joining in, whether you'll be watching the replay or joining in pretty soon. Just wanted to say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. The Lord is ever so gracious this morning for us to have another opportunity to come before him and he wants us to know that he is in control as long as we allow him to be in control, right? So this morning, the Lord, good morning, Tanisha, the Lord this morning has dropped in my spirit for me to talk about fear and doubt when it comes to the assignments, the giftings, the calling that's on our life, and when it cripples us in such a way that we do not go forth with what he's put in us, right? So let's say you're called to deliverance ministry and you don't want to go forth because you're scared, right? Or you're fearful at what deliverance ministry looks like. Like having to see people expel demons through vomit or having to see them slither on their back or having to see them in, in a posture that you're just not accustomed to, right? Or even being in the prophetic right? Not just having the gift of prophecy, but walking in like the office of, pro of the prophet. You may be fearful because when the Lord tells you to speak, you want to make sure that you're speaking correctly. You want to make sure that you're hearing correctly. You, you're, you're being charged with what it is that you're saying and you're responsible for what it is that you're saying, right? And because you're responsible for what it is that you're saying, you're kind of like, I hope I'm getting it right. Like, oh my gosh, I don't want to mess up this person's life because whatever you say to them, people and people trust the oil that's on you and what it is that you're saying and speaking into their life or over their life. And they take it and they run with it. I get it. <laughs> right? Even if, you, if you're a teacher, right? Or an evangelist. If you're a teacher, you want to make sure that you are exegeting the word. You want to make sure that you're breaking it down, getting the Greek, the Hebrew understanding. You want to make sure you're, you're knowing what context the scripture is coming from so if Paul was talking to the Corinthians you know who were they speaking to directly then and teaching the word as it is not bringing in your own opinions not bringing in your own thoughts not bringing in your own juice to it like you want to make sure that you are getting it correct and it can be scary because you how can we ever be a hundred percent sure right if you're an evangelist and you, you, you know, you got to preach the word and you have to, you know, exhort people and you have to go into the streets and, you know, you want to, what's the word I'm looking for? You want to win souls for the Lord. Like, it's scary. Am I saying the right scripture? Is, you know, is what I'm sharing with people on the street correct? Is it, you know... Is it that I'm I, I'm being used correctly? Like, am I sitting in the right role? All of these things go through our head. And it's not that it's not normal. It's not that um, you're not supposed to be scared. It's not that you're not supposed to be fearful. But we're not supposed to stay in it. Right? So, it's one thing to say, okay, while you're starting out, you're kind of worried. You're kind of in a space where am I sure that I'm getting this right? 
you have to begin to trust the Lord that he didn't give you a gift that he would not like. I wouldn't if you think about it in the work sense, right? Like if I'm a supervisor and I have an employee that reports to me. I would not give the employee the opportunity to run a whole meeting that would be a major account for the company if I didn't trust them. If I didn't trust the fact that they can go forth and run this meeting, get the account, and bring in the money to the company. I wouldn't have any doubt because I trust them, right? But when they begin to doubt themselves, that's when they mess up. That's when they stumble. That's when I then have to come in and, and like give them that support because I see that they're doubting themselves. I see that they're having difficulty because they're tripping up over themselves, right? So it's just like if, if you had to be an evangelist, and you had to go out and share the gospel with those on the street, right? Because you want to win souls for the Lord. You go out and like, you're like, okay, God, like, you know, I'm not necessarily this loud, boisterous person. And you don't have to be, right? We are all created individually to do. Some of us have the same gifting, but he gives us different ways to access people. Like he gives us different ways to get to people. <coughs> Excuse me. And we sometimes we get caught up in that. We get caught up in, oh, I may not be like such and such. Or this one doesn't do it like this. Like we cannot look at that, right? So you go out to evangelize and you're you're caught in a place where you're saying, okay, God, like you want me to talk to this person, this person's being rude, they're being difficult, they're being mean, and you still want me to like show love, you still want me to share the word, you still want me to, you know, um, have an opportunity to evangelize to them. And when people become nasty, you're kind of like, are you sure this is what you want me to do? Like, you want me to keep coming out here and doing this? You know, you want me to keep setting myself up to do this? And you can you can begin to let doubt come in and fear can, can start to creep in. And that is what God does not want from us. But because we already know that the Lord has equipped us. Right. So when he calls you to begin to start operating in your giftings, when he calls you to begin to start operating in your calling, that's on your life. Right. <clears throat> he already equipped you. He already anointed you to go forth at that point in time. So you begin to operate under the unction of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that then becomes your guide right? The word of God says anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Anxiety will weigh you all the way. If anyone has ever been anxious, I experienced it one time for a season and I'm good. <laughs> anxiety will weigh you down to the point of depression, where you have to totally check out. You have to have a seat because you don't feel like your life is work like anxiety can lead you to suicide and you feel like your life is not worth it you feel like all these thoughts bombard you where you feel as if you're never going to make it like you're not good enough and we can't be anxious for anything right we can't be fearful for anything when god equipped you and he called you, you're already qualified. That's right, Tanisha, he qualifies the call. You're already qualified. You, it's one thing to do it afraid, but it's one thing to be afraid of the call that's on your life. And I'm talking to myself because there was a point in time where I sat and I said to myself, Okay, the call that's on your life is a little bit weighty. 
okay, it's a little bit weighty, and I get it, right? They're very, it's it's powerful positions, right? Because people look at the prophetic and they're like, ooh and ah, but there's no ooh and ah when you're going through the trials. <laughs> when you're going through the trials and tribulations there's no ooh and ah all right you're kind of like ooh, ah. but people are attracted to the prophetic because of its power right because of the oil that's on the prophetic and i know that like deliverance i know certain giftings that's on my life that i would if I were any other body, any other person, or if I was in a different position, I would run, to be honest. And that's, and that's why I'm sharing this, because it's not just you, <laughs> right? It is not just you. So I sit in a position and I go, if you've called me to do this, if you have put me in this place, and you think that I can operate under this gifting then clearly you see something in me that I don't see in myself. And because you see it in me, because I trust in you, because I know that you love me and I have experienced your love. These are all important things that I'm saying. Because I know that you love me and have experienced your love. I will allow you, right? When you, I, I want to backtrack for a minute. If you're in a relationship with someone the way that you learn to trust them is through their love for you, right? So you're building trust based on the love that somebody has for you. You are based in trust. If I see this person unconditionally loving me, if I have a bad day and I snap at you and you still embrace me in your arms and say that I know you had a bad day, you know, it's going to be okay, I'm here for you or, you know, you have a bad couple of days, a season of just bad days and the person still stands by your side or you have family members that are sick or friends that are sick and the person still stands by your side. The person still fights with you and I don't mean verbally or physically fights with, with you, but like in prayer, the person still shows up the person still you know is engaged in your life the person is not dismissive they're not you know thinking that you know you just you just keep having bad seasons and like they give up on you no it's that it's that true agape unconditional love that they give you where you go I can totally trust this person with my life right but if you don't experience the love of God, how how do we how do we trust God with our lives when we don't experience the love of God, right? That overwhelming feeling that you get when you first come to Christ, that's the peace and that's the love of God. That's 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 literally wrapping his arms around you. Because he's been waiting for you, right? And as you continue to grow, as you continue to learn, you continue to have an understanding or you, you continue to experience, not have an understanding, you continue to experience what that love is. As things in life continue to happen, as you start to experience situations and circumstances, you begin to, un you begin to experience God's love in a different manner right? You get to see the, the scope of his love. Like the fact that we continue to sin and he still loves us. The fact that when we do sin, he still calls us to go for it. The fact that when we are unforgiving or, or, or unkind to people, he's like, okay, you need to rein it in. Like he gives us time. He gives us, um, tries over and over and over again. Right? It's just like a kid who gets in trouble. And the parent keeps giving them a chance over and over and over again. God gives us so many chances because he loves us and he wants us to get it right. Right? If we know the scripture that perfect love casts out all fear. So if we have an understanding of what God's love is and 
embrace his love, fear would not set in to the point that we're like, we can't go forward or we don't want to do that or I can't do that. Fear would not come in to cripple you. And that was the image he showed me, like the body of Christ is crippled because people are fearful of the call that's on their life. I I saw, um, what's this man's name? I don't know his name. Tom Hanks in, um, what's that movie? Forrest Gump. When he was in, I don't even know what you call them, the, the canes. He was using the canes and his legs were not, they were in the, um, the structure that was keeping them together. And then he began to run and it broke off. Like, that's the image that I got, that we are crippled by the call that's on our life. Instead of us focusing on the call, we need to focus on God, right? Psalm 34 and 4 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Are you even seeking the Lord? <laughs> right? Right? If you were in relationship, if you were in true relationship with God, those that are called to be pastors, those that are called to be apostles, those that are called to be bishops, whatever your title is, whatever your gifting is, your anointing, whatever it is, you have to be in relationship, not just to know what it is that you're doing, not just to get instruction and guidance, but you have to be in relationship so that he can continue to fuel you to do this thing. To walk this walk. He's the one that is going to continue to encourage you. That continues to fan the flame. That continues to walk you through this. That continues to pour out the oil so that you can do this. That gives you the grace that you can continue to do this. He's the one. He is the mode of transportation to do this thing. He is. And you can't do it without him. Right? Because once once you're in the presence of the Lord, it's almost like you feel like Superman. Like, I can do whatever it is that you said that you want me to do. Because you know him. When you don't know him is when you're fearful when you have not prepared because you don't know him, you don't know the scripture, that's when you're fearful. And that's why we're supposed to hide the word of God in our heart. Study to show ourselves approved. Line upon line, precept upon precept. There's work that has to happen on our end, right? Right? In order for everything to come together and work for God's glory. When people say it don't take all of that. It does take all of that and more. It takes all of that and more. Fasting's not easy. Having a consistent prayer life is not easy. Trying to go up level by level, higher and higher, it's not easy. It's more of a sacrifice, more of your time, right? That you feel like it's your time. It's more time that you're giving. It's more commitment that you're giving. You're, you're spending time instead of just reading. Now you're trying to study. Now you're trying to get gain understanding. Now you're trying to set yourself in a place that God can use you. But a lot of us stop because we don't want to do the work and we're fearful. It's just like when you're in school. Think about it. Forget college. Let's just stay in high school for a minute. They give you the mathematics. They give you the English, the history, the science, all of that. Right? If you don't study... If you don't pay attention during lecture, if you're not spending time with other students trying to understand things that you didn't understand while the teacher was, was talking and trying to work out the problems, 
How do you pass the class? How do you pass the regents? How do you pass any tests? You have to spend time outside of just the school system teaching yourself, gaining understanding, working alongside others, right? That's the part of fellowship. Working alongside others to help build up your knowledge so that when the test comes, you're ready, right? So that when you have to do that project and present in front of the class, you know what you're talking about. You're not just out there winging it. God's not sending us out there to wing it. And and that's the thing. If we were a prepared people, we wouldn't be fearful. Right? And then there's the other version of fear where it's like, okay, God, the spirit's getting high and I'm seeing the people that you're telling me to call out. But at that point in time, the Holy Spirit has come in and taken over. When you start out, you may start stumbling on your words or you may, you know, you you may quiver in your stomach or you may, your hands may shake or something like that, right? But when you get into the groove of the Holy Spirit, when you allow him in and allow him to work and his presence to come in, he takes over. He takes over. It says in Isaiah 41, 9 and 10, You whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant, I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So many times we spend saying, fear not for I am with you. But what he said before, I have chosen you and not cast you off. He chose you. He chose you to do this. He chose you. Like, there's no greater, you know, like when they're playing dodgeball and they choose you for the team, there's no greater choice (laughs) than God choosing you. This isn't an opportunity. This isn't a job. He chose you. He chose you because you can do it. He chose you because you're gifted. He chose you because you're talented. He chose you because you're willing. He chose you because he knows you'll be obedient, that you will steward the gift. He chose you. That would stir me up and get me excited. Because there's some level of trust coming from him, knowing that you're going to complete it, knowing that you're going to do the thing. And you're like, yo, you trust me that much to give me all of this? I can't mess around. (laughs) There's some level of, okay, if you think I can do this, I can do this. It reminds me of Joshua 1 and 9. Be bold and courageous. He commands us to be bold and courageous. Do you think Elijah would have gone out into this whole field, set up an altar in front of those false prophets of Baal and asked the Lord to come down and set a wet, drenched altar on fire if he didn't know the God that he served, if he didn't have relationship, if he didn't understand God's love for him, if he was fearful Fear brings in doubt, right? He would have been double-minded. He would have been wavering in faith. And God wouldn't have set the altar on fire. Think about it. This is all in the scripture. I'm not making none of these stories up. Think about it. And that's why God chooses us. That's why... 
He calls us. He calls us to come forth. He calls us to come up. He calls us to go out into the land and do what he has equipped us already to do. He equipped you. He equipped you. It's like when you go and you play sports, right? If you have to go and play baseball, they have to equip you. They give you a uniform so that they know which team you're on. They give you a bat. Or if you're if you're the um I don't even know these people, the the ones that catch the ball behind you that are on home base. They give you a glove. They give you a face mask. They they equip you in order to play your position or your role. Robocosa. They equip you. God has equipped you, so do not be fearful. Do not doubt. Do not be worried. Allow him to use you. If you're in the marketplace and he calls you to speak to him and to speak to someone, encourage them. You don't know what you're taking them out of. You don't know where they are in their mental capacity. You don't know that this person may be thinking about suicide. And now that you've spoken a word over their life because you've allowed the Holy Spirit to use you, you have now changed the course and the direction of their life because he spoke a word through you to them. He equips you to do that. He equips you to stop and to pray for people. No matter what you sound like, if you're not like using all these big and eloquent words, he equipped you in your own way. He designed you in a specific format. He didn't make us all the same. He did not make us all the same. And that and we don't we shouldn't get caught up on that. Get excited about your call. Read up on it. Study the word. Study the prophets in the Bible. Study those that were evangelists. Study those that were mothers in Zion. Study those that you know were teachers. Paul, study how his life changed. How he was Saul and how he was so bitter before. And that's such a nasty person. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, he, you know, and God gave him a whole new identity. Study the people that are in the word. That have the same gifting or the same call that you have. See their track record. See how they started. We all know Moses was a stutterer. And he was like, you not talking to me. You want me to lead these people? Like, but you have to study that in order to know that. Like, you're not the only one who was a, who, who who was afraid of what's on your life, of the oil that you carry. You're not the only one. You are not the only one. Look at Joshua. God said, go to God said, go to Nineveh. And he was like, nah, I'm good. Like, I'm going to go to Tarshish. And look at what happened to him. Look at what happened to him. And then he, ended, he had to end up going back to Nineveh. <laughs> How many of us have said, no, I don't want to walk in it. And we've gotten ourselves into more trouble. We've hit more roadblocks. We've stumbled. Life has been so difficult and hard. If we would just be obedient. That's another topic. But we should not be fearful of what God has placed in us. We should not be fearful when the Holy Spirit begins to move. So let's say you're talking to a coworker and he shifts the conversation in such a direction that you get to start to share scripture with them. You start to invite them to your church. You start to invite them, forget to your church. You start to invite them to Christ. What if he shifts that conversation in that direction? You're not fearful because the Holy Spirit's the one using you. 
And that's where I think we 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 lose understanding that you start, he finishes. He takes over. He drives. Right? But you study. You prepare. You discipline yourself. You fast. How do you think the Benny Hins and the Catherine Kuhlmans and all of these people came forward? They studied. They read. They sat in the presence. They prayed. They interceded. They spent time in relationship with God. And God showed up. He's not going to leave you out there to hang yourself and dry. Like he's not going to. Let's go into prayer. I hope this encouraged somebody to get up and go forth. And do the assignment. To do, to walk in the gifting. To walk the call out. How many lives could be saved because you say yes to the call? How many lives? Whether you you were a domestic violence case, whether you were raped or molested, whether you were, I don't know, financially in a pit for years upon years upon years and you've learned how to tithe and become a good steward over your money and you've learned how to speak the word of God over your finances and now you're flowing like whatever your case is you were sick you were terminally ill and you no longer are like those are the people he will direct you to there'll be a tug on your heart to to serve those in domestic violence to give them the word to encourage them to to start a ministry to speak to their hearts like those are the people he will send you to what you go through is not just for you. It's not just for you. You don't get a hard time just because he wants to give you a hard time. But know that there's a call in your life and you shouldn't run from it. Know that there's, there's a call in your life and you shouldn't doubt God for what he gave you. He wouldn't have given it to you. Remember the word of God says he knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. God had the blueprint for your life before he even created this whole earth when everything was dark and void. He had the blueprint. So it's not for you to be concerned. It's not for you to be worried. It's not for you to be fearful of what he put in you. But have the conversation with him. I've had it with him where I've said, okay, now I know you gave me these gifts. Now I know you You said X, Y, and Z. Like, how are we going to do this? And it's not for me to figure out the how, but he began to give me a peace. A peace about what he has given inside me. What he's stirring up inside me. What he's calling forth inside me. He gave me a peace about it and I had to start he, he 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 guided me to certain books right so let's let's just go with the prophetic I would read books by James Gall or John Eckhart or um I'm forgetting the other author right now or I'd read up on like Benny Hinn's life story and Catherine Kuhlman right and it, those things would encourage me. They'd give me greater understanding. And I find that when you have understanding, when you have understanding, you go, oh, okay. Right? And then you get into fellowship with other people that have the prophetic. So iron begins to sharpen iron. And... You begin to have a better understanding. This is where he's equipping you, right? Because now you're reading. Now you're you're in fellowship with others. Now your your pastor or whomever is is teaching you or training you or you know you're you're getting information 
you're reading the Bible, you're seeing about the prophets in the Bible, you're studying Isaiah, Ezekiel, you're studying these different prophets and their style and who they were called to prophesy to was it to the to the land was it to the nations was it to you know their local community who was it to but you're getting a whole picture and it's like that's why i brought up the school situation once you start to get an understanding you become more relaxed you become more comfortable in what it is that you know you may not have the whole thing but god would fill in like you may have half the Holy Spirit will come in and fill in the other half. But it's not for you to be fearful. That's why the word talks about beginning understanding. Okay? We have to get understanding. We can't just go out and do this thing. And that's why we get false. That's how we get false prophets. Because now... You know, they're, they're tapping into a different source, and into a different spirit. That's divination, right? You get the psychics, the mediums, those people, the clairvoyants. But we cannot be fearful to go forth and do what God has placed in us and upon us. Cannot be fearful. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. So Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Lord God, for the word that came forth, we thank you for the encouragement, Lord God, so that we would not, oh God, sit still in this season. We would not be stagnant in this season. We would not be stale in this season. But God, we thank you that you are fanning the flame, that you are the one, Lord God, that has placed all of these giftings within us, that you have given us the talent, oh God, for us to go forth to help build up your kingdom. So today we thank you. We thank you for being the creator. We thank you for being the way maker. We thank you for being the provider. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that we would submit our wills to you, we would submit our minds to you, our emotions, oh God, and our ways. Father God, we thank you today that you have equipped us for such a time as this. We thank you, oh God, that you continue, continue, oh God, to pour out encouragement, that you continue to send people to help build us up, that you continue to show us, oh God, and give us revelation from the word of God up for our lives. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is our guide, that he is our instructor, that he, Lord God, will continue to illuminate the way. Father, we thank you today. God, we ask that you would cleanse us and create in us a new heart, Lord God, and renew in us a right spirit. We ask for your forgiveness today for anything we may have said or done that was not pleasing unto you, God. We thank you, O oh God, that we have the ability to repent, Heavenly Father. So we repent this morning of our ways. God, that they have not been like your ways, Father God. And we are asking you, Lord God, to cleanse us and purge us so that we may be sanctified and holy before you. Father God, we thank you that you said that we should not fear, that we should not be dismayed, that you are with us and you have chosen us, oh God. Lord God, we thank you that you wouldn't have chosen us if you didn't love us. So Father God, we pray right now in Jesus' name that we would embrace your love, that we would embrace, oh God, the call that's on our life. Father, that we would embrace the giftings and the talents that you have poured out and portioned out for us, Father. Father, for we are pre destined with a purpose and a purpose we shall fulfill. God, we will fulfill the purpose of God on our lives. Father God, we thank you that we would continue to operate in the will of God. Father, not the permissive not the permissive will, but we would continue to operate in your will today. Lord God, we thank you, oh God, that you have equipped us and called us for such a time as this. God, help us to study, to show ourselves approved. Help us, oh God, to be in your presence to build relationship with you. God, that we would trust you in all things and doubt you for nothing. Help us to not be double-minded in this season, oh God, so that we would not waver. Increase our faith. Increase our capacity. Oh God, we are praying now, Lord, in Jesus' name that we would be encouraged. Oh God, that we would allow the Holy Spirit to be the head of our lives. God, we thank you that your word would continue 
continue to be the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our pathway. Father, illuminating the way before us. Father, we thank you that you would show us the way. We thank you that you would give us the revelation in the word of God. We thank you that we would not be fearful, that we would not have doubt, that we would not have anxiety or worry. Oh God, you said, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving that we would let our requests be known unto you, Lord. Help us to come to you when we are worried. Help us to come to you when we have fear. Help us to come to you, oh God, when there's doubt that's creeping in, oh God. For we know that these things are not of you, but it's just a ploy and a plot of the enemy, oh God, to take us away from the purpose that is on our lives. Father God, we thank you that we would alloy anointing and oil, oh God, to flow from us. We thank you that we would spend time in preparation, oh Heavenly Father. We thank you that we would hide the word of God in our hearts, oh God, studying line upon line and precept upon precept. Father, we thank you today that you are equipping us. We thank you today that you are challenging us in this season to not be fearful, but to go forth. God, so today we trust you. Today we trust you. Today, oh God, we trust you that you have given us the right call, that you have placed us on the right seat on the right bus, oh God. Father God, and we would not doubt what you have called us to do, oh God, but we would walk boldly and courageously going forth to do your assignments, going forth, oh God, to speak a word into people's lives, going forth to teach the gospel, going forth to shepherd the many, going forth to build up your kingdom, whatever it is, Lord God, we shall go forth. We shall be prepared, God, and we will not walk in fear. God, we trust you today. We thank you that no weapon formed against this shall prosper. Oh God, that every tongue that rises up against us is brought down already in condemnation. God, we thank you that we are covered by the blood of the lamb. We thank you that we are under the wings of the shadow of the almighty. We thank you that you are our guide and our protector. Father, we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You guys be encouraged. Do not be fearful. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. None of it. He didn't say that he would leave you. He didn't say that he would forsake you. He's with you. He's with you. He's not going to let you do this thing by yourself. He is with you. But you got to be in his presence. You got to have a relationship with him. So just be encouraged today to go forth and do the assignments that the Lord has given you. I love you. He loves you. And join me next week, Saturday at 6 a.m. The Lord's Prayer. Tell somebody. <laughs>